when God says, do this for me, hey, okay, it is well. Now we say we want to be born again. This is the cross we have to, after all, Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. It is, see, Jesus just said, take up your cross. We, we have added cross of suffering. Well, see, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. <clears throat> Sometimes we confuse obedience to faith. You can obey without faith. It is the faith in your obedience that brings results. For example, God says, give your car away. Hmm. What shall I do? I have to obey God now. I heard it. Or I saw it in a vision. An angel walked to me and said, I should sell my car. Okay. I will obey you. Who am I? After it's God that gave me car. And then you gave it. You obeyed. But there was no faith. Now you've obeyed though. Because there is no faith, it will take you a long time to get another car. But then, God says, give your car. Why would the Lord be telling me to give? And this is my only car. Does God want me to trek? No, that's not how he thinks of me. He's big and he wants good things for me. Jesus said, how much more shall your heavenly father give good things? You know, so God wants me to have good things. So why would he tell him to give? Hey, he has the ability to give me 10 cars tomorrow. See your thoughts? The one who's telling me to give away my car has the ability to do what? Give me 10 cars by tomorrow. Say, Lord, I will obey you. Now, what is that? Faith. So, as you're obeying him, you're not seeing suffering. Now, it is that faith that he will honor in your life. Not just that you have obeyed him. The wrong things you have learned. The wrong things you have built your life on. That is your main distraction. That is the bondage that is holding you bound. <clears throat> what does it do? When God is giving you an instruction that you can't obey, you can't believe. Why? Because it doesn't tally. It doesn't tally with what? Everything you have learned. Do you know what it means? A whole nation is going to war. And as they are getting ready to go to war, God comes and says, look, this war, this is how you do your formation. Send the singers in front. <laughs> Who's saying this? A prophet. Agasa. This is war. It's no music concerts. <clears throat> That's what God said. Now, someone who lacks understanding will begin to reason. Why does God want the singers to die first? <laughs> truly, truly, choirs, no choir. That's where all the nonsense things used to happen. Hey, God has caught them finally. God has caught them finally. She wish to tell them. We should tell them that God said we should put them in front. So when they throw the arrows, they were. The... <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Like all God said, put the singers in front. Now you begin to give it interpretation based on the information that you have stored up in your mind. But God was just trying to tell them that, look, this thing, let me go fight. I'm the one that will handle this battle. So put this, they should just be praising me. As they are praising me, I'll take care of the battle. But the wrong interpretation. And that's why I say teachers are more dangerous than prophets. Because many times teachers are the ones that interpret the prophecy. So if the if the interpretation of the prophecy is wrong the prophecy may be right but the interpretation of it may be wrong and if the interpretation is wrong is the interpretation you believe you will be wrong how you know you're part of the church that Jesus is building this is one simple way to know as you mature in him you will realize that he's taking out the spots and blemishes from you suddenly you realize that ah, this pastor that you know I used to all of a sudden, I, I listen to him and I say, ah, ah, <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> what has happened? You have known the truth. Now, those things you used to jump at before. You look at them and say, hey. <laughs> ah, I, I wish I can talk to this pastor. Man. I wish I can explain this thing to him. <clears throat> Something is going on in your life. You're growing to become like him. But Jesus brought the Holy Spirit to us and said the Holy Spirit will take your hand and do what? Guide you into all truths. So this is what you're supposed to do. When you hear people teach, when you hear people talk, 
when you hear people prophesy, thank God for their lives, thank God for what they said, you go back with those words to the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, what are you really saying? <clears throat> what are you really saying? That He's the only one that can guide you into the truth of that thing.